Nature surrounds me, the birds singing their wonderful tune, the river flowing, deer looking at me as if I'm a threat, but I am no threat. I'm merely observing and appreciating what is put right in front of my eyes. Many say I'm profound, that I have a way with words. But that is simply not the case. I'm just stating the obvious. I'm stating what I see right in front of me. And what I see right in front of me is my week one team for SPL. Originally, I was planning on using something a bit bulkier, uh, CM Kuhn, Fizdef, Skarmory with uh, Mean Look, Curse, Rest, Gengar, Clado, Blissey, whatnot. Um, however, I also made this team, and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I was planning on using it another week. However, I asked, Ace, uh, I asked ABR, which he thought would be better into BKC, and uh, he said this, so ultimately, uh, I decided to go with this and use that team, or rather, a variation of it, a later week. Uh, this team requires a lot of awareness and, yeah, it requires a ton of awareness to play. And uh, misplaying with it has great consequences. Uh, it also does take a few other risks, Tyranitar, here. Uh, it stays in turn one versus Metagross. However, I, I mean, there's ups and downs to it. Thank you, Mr. Horse. Um, it's, there's ups and downs to this. Uh, one of the big upsides to this is that, I don't know what I'm saying, truthfully. Um, basically, switching into Metagross is a pain. I mean, you can look at it and see that I have all these traditional Metagross answers, but none of them are that great into it. And if it's CB, there's a good chance it just explodes turn one anyways. Um, and if it's not CB, I... KO it, and I get switch, uh, switch initiative. Perhaps I save Tyranitar for later, because with Sunny Day, Charizard, and Pattaya Pert, I would like to be able to activate this whenever, but I would like Sand Up when Swampert comes out. Um, so that's kind of the thought process behind that. There's some risk, but... In not trying to get an advantage somewhere, then you're risking the game elsewhere. If you have a perfectly rock-solid team, or what you'd like to claim is that, then you're probably going to lack win conditions, this, that. Uh, there's no perfect team in Pokemon, etc., etc. So that is how I justify this. Which I think is perfectly fine. And it's perfectly fine against every other lead as well. Or, well, I can switch and whatnot. I wonder if that echo is, like, audible. It's whatever. So, here's Zapdos. Agility pass into Tire Per, I think is really cool. Uh, this Per can eat Blissey Estos, Ice Beam, faster than Milo. Or at least usually faster than Milo. I doubt he'd, like, creep it. Um, agility pass into Tar, Breloom, whatnot. It's it's just a nice mod to have. Helps against Arrow. Yeah, just overall a really nice set. I like this Zard because it breaks through Blissey. Uh, and Milo. This plus Purr. And uh, yeah, something that's really cool about this team is instead of having to use Doug Trio to beat Blissey, which you see on traditional special offense, and I would consider this more of special offense, um, instead, you can beat it with Pur, Zard, Regice, uh, Tar and Brainloom obviously have no issue, and Zapdos can be Tom Pass to get momentum, maybe even Agility Pass. Yeah. HP Grass for Swampert, and I still want a Thunder Wave though. This EV spread breaks Rachi Sub, and the defense, I believe, is for... I want to say, no, it's not. Is it just Tyranitar? 
No, I don't think it's just Tyranitar. I think it's Arrow Rock Slide. Is it? I'm copying this. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when playing this team, you really have to know what you're supposed to do, especially against bulkier teams. Uh, you have to know how to use Breloom. You have to know Charizard or Pert, which you trade first. You have to know when to click Stun Spore, because the answer to certain Pokemon on this team against uh, bulkier or more offensive teams is often just positioning and knowing what your team is while they don't know what your team is. For example, Swampert lacks Ice Beam, However, that's generally okay against Salamence. Um, because not only do you have Endeavor, but... I mean... Breloom can lure it in. Zard can lure it in. Regice is good against it. Zapdos is good against it. Uh, Tyranitar is okay against it. So you look at all these factors. While on paper it may be more of an issue, if you play properly, it should be fine. So I will probably link the team in the video description or whatever. So if you want to steal the team, that will be the easiest way to. Turn one, Tyranitar against Suicune. I get my sand up, which is nice. Zapdos is ev to always take an Ice Beam. Plus sand. T-Bolt is a roll if they ha have no bulk to 2 it KO. However, Sand will pretty much always pick them off, I believe. It's like 45 to 50 something, I think. Uh, so here I T-Bolt again in case they stay in, and it also deals good damage and uh, I can gain momentum after the Tom Pass against the plethora of other Pokemon. Or they reveal a ground type, which isn't too significant, still nice. There I elect to not the Tom Pass, as I think it's very unlikely he clicks Focus Punch, and just having it up in the air whether or not I have the Tom Pass, I think is something nice. Uh, he will probably still expect the Tom Pass on it, but in a situation later on where, you know, his play is to switch to something, but he thinks I'm probably gonna the Tom Pass there. He might switch to it anyways, just because the Tom Pass is not revealed and all that. I mean, again, he's aware of that. I can double, but it's just something nice to have. So out comes Tyranitar, Earthquake hits, Snorlax, and Metagross in one move. As he sends in Metagross, and you see why I don't want to switch Charizard um, into Metagross. And I can get a flamethrower off, I get a KO, and this is a nice, relatively straightforward series of events. Here I switch into Red Rice, which is arguably the move. However, if we were to look at Breloom. Yeah, that is doing too much. I could go Breloom into Red Rice, but then I reveal Breloom, which is probably uh, not for the best. I don't think it's worth it to sacrifice Zapdos when JLD into Swampert could absolutely tear up this team, which is looking more offensive. And uh, here I click t uh, HP Grass. Because there's a chance that he just surfs as a double into Charizard would be very scary for him. This is definitely a case where Thunderbolt would have been better. And Swampert's my only switch that does not die. Here, I believe I should have doubled into Zapdos. From his, per uh, from his perspective, it doesn't really make sense to keep Metagross in. It just doesn't. Uh, if I'm Bataille and... Or uh, if I'm Salak, which is what he would be expecting, most likely. Um, although I am very bulky for a Salak Berry Swamper. It doesn't make much sense for him to stay in. 
and he doesn't know my last. In his mind, my last could be something of defensive value, meaning that my Swampert uh, trading for the Metagross and possibly something else is absolutely not advanta uh, advantageous for him. Because of this, he absolutely should switch out. Of his revealed Pokemon, Suicune is, well, Suicune is his only other revealed Pokemon, and of his other possible Pokemon in the back, it's unlikely that there's something that really takes me on well. Because of this, I should have doubled out into Zapdos to then the Tom pass out into Charizard. Uh, this would have put me in a much better position, and it would have most likely gotten me a kill. Yeah, I don't have much more to say. Although, if he has a Celebi, if this is, like, Curse Boomlax, uh, CM Fire, maybe Super B, DD Mentz uh, for Doug Trio, and maybe last Tyranitar, then potentially you could have a Celebi that's uh, timid and faster. However, the likelihood of that is pretty low. So, yeah, by doing that, I'd make progress and... That progress would help me preserve Swampert's HP in the long run. So here I instead surf, which brings complications. As I go out to Red Dice, he predicts that and goes Metagross. So this series of plays from his perspective makes sense. He doesn't know my Swampert set, he doesn't know my last. As I said before, Salak is very threatening. Um, and Magneton is looking to be a massive threat into my team. So by doing this, well, he's able to safely get it in, which applies pressure to me, and it means that he's not dealing with uh, Swampert's, I don't want to say Swampert's wrath yet, but he doesn't have to deal with that yet. Uh, so I think this was a smart move from him. From his perspective, from my perspective, this is better for me. Uh, here I switch out into Breloom as it's pretty safe. I feel like it's very, like, there's no way he makes that move if he's not grassed. It doesn't necessarily mean that he clicks it. And I mean, he still could, but I almost want to say I should have went into Charizard here. Because I need to start applying offensive pressure. And given how the tire berry works, I need to like switch it in, and then it won't activate, and then I click again, and then it won't activate, and then it will activate. Or actually, after HP Grass, then uh, it won't activate, I'll kill it, and then it will activate. And that series of events is better for me. So, while it is possible he could T-Bolt, I believe that I should have just... Uh, pulled the trigger, and went out into Charizard. So here's Breloom against Magneton. Uh, there's no way he switches in Salamence, which is most likely. And then his last is probably Tyranitar or Salamence. Yeah, I think that is a good assessment. Or uh, Salamence and Tyranitar or Heracross. Here are Spore. I should have Sky Uppercutted. Uh, I mean, if Sky Uppercut is the move, then it's probably the move to go Salamence for him, I, perhaps. That's even questionable, though. But, uh, yeah, it's very unlikely he risks something of importance to Spore. So I think I should have just Sky Uppercutted, and I'd be in a better position. Out comes Metagross, and I stun Spore. So, <clears throat> here Charizard is a pretty simple move for me to make. Um, that covers this, and looking at his Metagross, I do think it is pretty clearly the move. On one hand, uh, if I stay in or do anything but Charizard, because 
it can only take so much, and it has explosion. So it's going to get that trade versus part that he wants so desperately. Uh, however, he could have won Salamence here on a mid-ground between a uh, fighting move like Focus Punch and Charizard switching in. So I don't think Stun Spore was objectively wrong. It's more up to what he clicks. However, if I go Charizard there, then that is very scary for him. So I send a meta, uh, Swampert, which isn't the best, but I click Surf. Uh, unlikely he booms on a sub. And here I Surf again, I get the KO. Here he goes out into Mag, I believe I switch out. Something worth noting is, keeping as many Pokemon alive as possible is really nice in this end game for uh, Heracross. Here I Sky Uppercut, I believe. Uh, it doesn't make much sense for him to switch. Because Magnacon. Basically, because of how this end game folds out with Charizard. And here I Sack Breloom, which uh, seems pretty needed. I could have sacked Swampert instead. However, if he agilities, that's a risk. That being said, there's no way he agilities. I mean, and Swampert covers a sub, which, like, he's not going to have. But more importantly, uh, it allows me to keep Breloom, which has the ability to affect Spore, which is more valuable here, most likely. So here, Al can come uh, Charizard to get the KO. Al comes Ments. And uh, this is a troublesome position. If I'm expecting Heracross here as the last, I switch straight out into Tyranitar as I need to preserve as many Pokemon as possible to take it on via sand damage. If I expect Tyranitar last here, I need my Tyranitar healthy to take on the Tyranitar and instead I should be going, I should be using Red Ice. To take on Salamence. Arguably, I should have switched straight to Regice. In fact, I will say I absolutely should have switched straight to Regice. Because there's a chance that it lives, which I'm going for anyways. And if it does live, then I can still deal with Heracross. And it, well, it's most likely going to die to sand if it lives. Which means I can... Uh, Probably send out whatever. But again, keeping Pokemon alive is nice against Heracross. Because sand damage may end up being my way of beating it. Sand damage plus uh, it not being at a perfect amount of HP because of rock slide damage. Or whatnot. But instead I go straight to Zapdos, which... It's arguably fine because I went... I followed it up with my Regice. You could have also argued I should have went Swampert because Zapdos is 285 speed, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Which uh, outspeeds Adam Haircross, which it surely would be. Which may come in handy. So I got on to Regice. Which again is for last Montai Tyranitar, not Heracross. And here comes out Tyranitar as it clicks Brick Break. So there were definitely some turns that I could have, should have, would have done better. So how I played Breloom, I absolutely should have went Zapdos. That turn he went Suicune against my Swampert uh, the first time he did it. Charizard overall just should have been positioned to get more kills. Everything else seemed pretty okay. I could have sacked something instead of Red Ice to keep my HP up so that I had it healthy for a DD Salamence. That is a possibility. 
And uh, I'll take my time. Let's see. Okay, let's go back. So here, if instead of doing this, I went to Zapdos, then that comes Red Dice. Ah, uh, you gotta assume he switches. I mean, that's kind of the point of the move. I could have also went Breloom, perhaps. And with the Pokemon that he does have, the Pokemon that he does have, um, I have Red Dice in the back for that. I know he has a Heracross because uh, he did his own video talking about this game. So there's that. So, I mean, I really have to think. To, so, I sack something. I'll come Zapdos, perhaps, if I go straight to Loom. Or, what's my other Pokemon per? No. So, if I sack Zapdos, send out Red Dice, then Suicune's an issue. However, I can pressure him with Charizard. And no matter what, that's going to be really nice. Uh, even if he has a Tyranitar, I can hit it with Pattaya Overheat, which would KO after a Flamethrower, I believe. And then with that and pressure from Loom and all that. Yeah, so perhaps I could have sacked something else. However, all of that being said, uh, it would have been fine if I went Zapdos here. And going Zapdos here is probably better than sacking Zapdos there. Uh, sacking Zapdos instead of taking the hit with Red Dice. So I leave you with the sound birds chirping, as one does.